Hi guys, how are you all doing tonight? It's Yolo Pup here. Today we have Amanda from Ring and Run Dog Walkers in Staten Island joining us. So Amanda says that her dog was a real asshole when she first got him. So that inspired the whole thing, the whole business. So we're gonna get Amanda on. Let's go. Hope everyone's doing well. We just invited Amanda in. Hey. Hey, hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? How do you get the lighting so good? You're like a professional. Oh, shoot. I have two lights right here. <laughs> That's go. the secret. That's how. That's how. Good lighting. This is funny. The dog so how are you doing tonight? Here. I'm good. I'm laughing. The dogs think someone's here. They just came running to the front door because I said, hi, how are you? So they're like, who's here? <laughs> well, we're going to get to all that yeah. a little later on. But to start, can we um, go back to 2014 and yeah. uh, find out how it all went down? Yeah, we can do that. Uh, wow, you get a lot. You get a lot of people on here fast. Good for you, gal. <laughs> Thanks. So what do we got? I guess 2014 was where the where we started to really think about, you know, so, you know, one of those things where you're at your regular job and you're like, this can't last forever. What else do I want to do? What do I want to do? Blah blah blah. And I always, always, I always used to tell people, you know, do whatever you wake up thinking about and you go to sleep thinking about. And for me, it was always like dog training and dogs like it's just something that was very interesting to me it's just something that I enjoy doing so I realized like I think we you know we mentioned that we were looking for help with our dog when we wanted to go away and I just was not comfortable with the with the answers I was getting from people and I wasn't feeling good about leaving her with anybody and I'm just like how can I feel like I know more than people that do this for a living you know because there were situations where someone was you know I said you know she can be She's dog selective. You know, I prefer to be the only dog. Yeah, well, we, we can try. I have another little dog staying with me. And I'm like, no, like that. You're not listening to what I'm saying. Like, I don't want it to eat your dog. Like, I didn't want to go on vacation more worried about what was happening than the person watching my dog. So we were just not going away as much. And that's basically how it started. I said, we can't be the only one that feel, you know, that people that feel this way, that, that their dog needs more. And it's not just a an easy dog to just take walk in the house take her out and take her for a stroll you know the dog needed a little bit more and i also realized it didn't take much you can get a lot done you know in 20 minutes a half an hour like you probably don't train for 15 minutes straight your dog's toast if you're really putting the time in mm -hmm. so that's kind of where we said you know let's just start doing this we did it well i did it while i was working at another job like getting off the bus from the city getting changed in my car going to walk a couple dogs and then a couple more and then it gets to the point where you're like I have to choose, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And my job ended up choosing for me, which ended up being a wonderful decision. You know, they were having, you know, layoffs and I went and I remember thinking like, when it happened, you think you'd be sad? I was like, oh my God, like now I got to put my big girl pants on and leave that salary and like get this done. And it's, I've never been so happy to walk around picking up dog poop all day and training dogs. Like I, 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 I hope everybody finds this purpose and joy because you don't believe it you know you read all these inspirational quotes like follow your dreams and do what makes you happy and you're like yeah and you never do it until you're you feed it to the fire and you have to do it and it's not all everyone knows owning a business you know it's not rainbows and butterflies but I like not answering to anyone sometimes you wish you did you know you wish you had someone else to bounce stuff off of but I like that you know what I mean mm -hmm. You go, girl. Well like, I'm gonna say I can I can talk forever, so you gotta cut me off. I'm gonna give ahead of time when I'm going down a rabbit hole. Like I said, I'm uninsultable. Just say you're losing, <laughs> you're losing me. Start over. No, you're you're all good. Well, we're here with you. Yeah. So, yeah. um, when um dog owners come to you, what are they coming to you for? Um, it, it's a it's a, a range of things. So we have. You know, your Instagram people just looking for like quick tips and tricks. And we try and do that. We do post something. It's, it's hashtag client tips Tuesdays. We try to put very easy information because you know how it is. Like when you put something out there, we're, we're trying to post super easy info. That's not going to get anyone hurt because if you put out information, dogs are not robots. You know, what works for one doesn't work for another. And that's the one thing I wish people would realize is. Things that work for one dog doesn't work for another. Most people don't end up with two of the exact same dogs. You know, when people say, oh, I had dogs all my life. I'm like, I I've had teeth all my life. That doesn't make me a dentist. You were good with the one dog. It doesn't mean the next one's going to go the same way. 
Mm-hmm. So see what happened. I don't remember what your question was. I told you, you got to keep me on the rails here. <laughs> um, it, what is the, that's, oh, that's what they come to us for. Yeah. A lot of times it's, we have those people, the Instagram people, we have the people that are local that kind of want to just get their dogs out and for walks. And then we have people that want training. So we do a fair amount of training on our walks, partially for selfish reasons, right? Like I know we weren't hired for training, but I don't want me or anyone that works with us to have their arms ripped off. And because I enjoy it, right? And now there's no owner involved. We get the dogs walking well pretty, pretty quickly. And that's the mm-hmm. other thing that was a very, very big eye opener is that the dogs I was spending a half an hour a day with a few times a week were better behaved than my own dogs. And I'm like, wow, there's something to be said about there being a very clear delineation. Like this ring and run chick pulls up and we, 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 we work and we walk well, and there's no hugging and kissing and muddy relationship. And I'm going to let you do this and I'm going to yell at you and you can jump on me, but not when your feet are muddy, it's all, and we're not militant. I hate the word alpha. I hate when I see people being rough with their dogs. There's no need when it's clear that you're going to provide guidance for them. Mm -hmm. But that's what the majority of the people come to us for. It's walking, training. And like I said, you get your occasional like Instagram person pop on just for, you know, some easy, Mm -hmm. easy info. But like I said, we do a lot of that in our client tips Tuesdays, but we're just trying to post simple stuff. And I just Mm -hmm. made a commitment to myself. I said, I'm going to post all the the raw footage of training. You know, if you videotape yourself, you learn a lot. And out of 10 videos, not even one is perfect. And I'm like, I can't post that. I'm like, you know what? Someone's going to learn from it. Now we've made it a thing like, show me what I'm doing wrong. And some people come up with awesome stuff. And I'm like, it is what it is. Like, I'm, I'm right with owning that, you know? Mm-hmm. Definitely. So yeah. let's talk about that clear communication. How yeah. are you able to um, instill clear communication with the dogs that you take there's, care There's real communication where you, you're talking about when you're trying to be operant and teach them and you're using a clicker and you're using your markers. But then there's also communication of don't, don't jump on me. You know what I mean? Like when I come in and you jump on me, I'm just going to, bring you back down to all fours and you jump on me and I'm just going to bring you back down calm as could be. And some dogs look at you and go, Oh, that, that didn't work. And they never do it again. And then others, you have to figure out a different way to go about it. It depends how long they've been practicing what they're practicing and who they do it with. But that's, that always Mm -hmm. comes down to the individual dog, but -hmm. communication for us, is it's just simple. It's a few words. And with most of the clients we walk, it's food. I'm, I'm a huge, proponent of food if as long as we're we're more into like what mindset are we feeding i don't want to feed an excited brain even if the dog's in the physical position i want so Mm -hmm. i'm not big on okay we're gonna go out the door sit stay and the dog's literally like a slingshot like say the word okay i I don't want Mm -hmm. that i don't care if you're sitting standing just don't knock me over going out the door and when you're Mm -hmm. calm i'll feed you or you get to leave it depends some dogs work for toys freedom is a huge reward that people don't use enough like just coming out of a crate or when we teach recalls, their reward is getting to run away again. So for some dogs, that's enough. They just want to go back out and be chased. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's all about mm-hmm. the individual dog. So what's a normal day like for you? Oh, man, that's a great question. How, how far back do we want to go? I'm like, it's sadly, admittedly, that my the start of my day is usually, which makes me sad, like a zombie, you're half awake, and I'm reaching for my phone. I don't like the way that feels anymore. <laughs> reaching for my phone like your eyes are closed and you're like eh. so I know there's some type of addiction there but I'm usually you know looking at my phone I check emails first thing in the morning I'm trying to set my emails on a timer because people do tend to think when you answer all the time you're available all the time so I'm answering emails we're going through you know we're trying to post our Instagram stuff for the day and just get that out of the way then we get out and we just start picking up dogs and walking them we talk to the rest of the team see what everybody's doing send out the schedules and it's honestly that most of the day it's just walking and then we, we do training gigs in between when we can. But to me, that's like the best part of it is just getting to pick them up and walk. Cause it's, it's infectious. Like people don't realize I'd say all the time, the way people like vibrate. And I always heard like, it's your vibes and it's what you do and blah, blah, blah. I don't ever feel sad throughout the day. Like things can hit me at the end of the day and, and being part of a rescue world is heavy. We were talking about that earlier, like getting, messages and emails about people that want to get rid of dogs like that's heavy but anything going on like you go to pick up a dog and it brings you a toy you're like you're a horrible human if you can be annoyed while that's happening like something's void in your mind like you, you can't be sad when that happens like we have dogs that like they come they're like hey look what i brought you and i'm like thanks man and then i'll give them my best for the half hour or the hour that we're with them and then it kind of just spills over to the next thing. I say, like, if you wake up in the morning, you're already on a winning streak, right? So you just kind of mm-hmm. keep that energy going until the end of the day. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And then when, when you're walking with the team, how many dogs are you walking with? So it depends. We've had like a, a groups out. I think we had a, a, a boxer's birthday. There was like, I think there was four boxers out all at once and four of my buddies. And a lot of the, I assume the IRS and the government won't be watching this unless you're in some kind of trouble. But we have a lot of people that, that were working for us and then they picked up like their teachers. So if one of my friends is like, you know, I'm looking to pick up a couple bucks and they've done work and they've met the dogs. I'm like, let's go out on a hike and we'll call people. We're going out today and they're like, yeah, take my dog. So we're lucky like that. Like we have some clients that'll go whenever we can take their dogs. And we go out with probably on average, like we'll take three or four together. But there's been groups, I think as big as like five or six, but everybody has a handler. There's only one or two groups of dogs that I'll take on my own. Mm -hmm. Because the, the thing with that is we have dogs that we could, we have groups of dogs that we could walk together, but loose dogs are an uncontrollable variable that are like starting to impede on my business because it's, nice. I can't control that. So now I'm holding two dogs. I don't have a free hand. I don't feel safe. I don't know how I give pack walkers immense credit that they have that much control over their dogs. We just don't have the time. That's something I want to think about implementing is with the owners is, let's spend more time with your dog to get them where they need to be instead of just the half hour and like do some training in there too, because mm -hmm. there's only so much control we can get within a half. Hour. I'm just happy if we can get them to the point of not sassing other dogs. Like that's enough for me. I'm happy with that. But if a dog rolls up on us, we have some dogs that'll do damage. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm not worried about my, I am worried about my guys, but I know there's a lot of them that can hold their own. They'll, they'll put a little dog in the hospital. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I can't have a, not free hands when that's going on. Right. Burnett Farm Dogs. Amanda, you need to talk about the power of your walks. You make it look easy and it's not. Can you talk about how you make it look so easy? I don't know. I, I, you've, she's brought that up before. I'm not sure. Like, I guess it's probably, honestly, I'm, I'm not going to post when the dog's dragging me down the block, right? Like, I, I, I start the video, like, we kind of, you make sure you can connect a little bit when you're leaving the house. Like, that's what most people don't realize how important. What's up, Calm Canine Training? Wow, I just read. I see some things going on down there. I don't, th I think people take for granted how important it is, you know, to leave the house calmly, you know, and, and I'm guilty of getting my natural energy is very excited. I love getting dogs juiced up, but the dogs we juice up, we also practice bringing them down. So that's something, it's such an easy exercise with puppies, get them crazy, bring them down. Most dogs don't know what it feels like to go from a 10 to a zero. Mm -hmm. They go from a 10 and they kind of live at a seven, you know, yeah. so when we get there, I'll say hi to them. They get on leash. I, maybe I'll wait for eye contact from some of them, but going out of the door, there's only one or two that we still let it rip us out of the door because that's, I don't have the hour to spend, nor does the owner want us in there for an hour while I just wait it out because that's what it comes down to a lot of the time is patience, mm -hmm. you know, and just waiting out that energy. And, and cause some of them actually have to go to the bathroom. So there's only so much we can push on, on the patience portion, but mm -hmm. We just make sure we can get some kind of connection. Even if it's asking for super easy commands, you just put them into like, I want to say a follower mindset, but like, okay, we're going to do things together. I'm not just going to go out and, and search the ground and search the ground and pull out in front of you. It's kind of like, let's just do this together. You know, mm -hmm. for most of them now, it feels like very like organic and it's kind of hard to explain. But like mm -hmm. I said, it's, they're, they're just as happy to see me because that's like the funnest part of their day while their parents are at work, right? Like they're just waiting Mm -hmm. One of our clients is like, they started at 630 this morning. Like they know what day it is. And all, all she sends me a picture is, is two pit butts sticking out of the blinds <laughs> on each side. Like they're both looking at each, each side of the blinds, but they, they know what's up now at this point. It's just kind of like an organic thing with most of them. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Okay. Talk to me about uh, bringing them up to a 10 and getting them down to a zero. I feel like that's very, very hard for yeah. um, a lot of dog owners. Yeah. So again, it always depends on the dog. Like we're working with a dog now that bringing, you know, that was the original plan when he was a puppy. We did one quick puppy session with him and there was some red flags right out of the gate with this puppy. And I was like, I kind of do things differently. We don't, you know, we say it all the time. Like, I don't give a shit what tricks your dog can do. I don't care if it can sit, it can lay down. If you can't have family over and the dog not hurt somebody or be, or knock someone down the steps, like, tricks and commands don't mean anything you know what i mean so with puppies right away it's just playing with them even if it's for a second well you know we'll hold their collar the second they show a moment of calm you let them go you know you can mark it with a word we kind of don't we don't mark anything you know we don't name it till we like it same thing with the big dogs but there are dogs if you bring them up too high they'll bite you and the one we have now it was the one i was muzzle training i'm sure his mom's going to get on here 
I mean, he's, he was putting a hurting on her and I'm not talking about biting like where she needs stitches, but biting hard enough to leave like ugly bruises all over. And I'm like, well, you, you know, yeah. nothing's scarier. And I think any like trainer and Walker would agree than like leash biters and humpers. It's very scary. Like the level of arousal that comes with those behaviors is frightening. And he was a huge leash biter. And I'm like, I'm like borderline over my head, but I think she can do this. Cause I know if I had time with him, we could work this out, but you're dealing with an owner that has a job. But um, with him, we kept it low. So I knew his favorite toy was a rope. So I'm looking for something rubber that he doesn't like as much in his mouth to play with, right? And then I'm trading. And then he has to wait for a second before he lunges at me. I'll just stand still and hold it. And he kind of looks like, what are we doing here? Take it. Now you can have it. You're waiting for a, a hair of calm. Some dogs you can wait for full calm. It really, it really, like I said, my answer is almost going to be, it always depends on the dog. Mm -hmm. But we always say what you reward will repeat. It's such a simple thing, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. So people don't realize they're constantly inadvertently rewarding chaos because puppies jumping on you and petting them when their feet are on you and wagging is adorable until you're about to go to a wedding or a funeral and their paws are muddy. You know, right. well, that's all we go now, right? With COVID, you just only go to weddings or funerals. Nobody, <laughs> nobody's going anywhere else. But you know, really, if you're petting that, like that's such a wonderful thing. And all of a sudden the dog's huge, you know, and hits you in the mm -hmm. stomach. You're like, don't do that. You know, that mm -hmm. comes down to communication. Like, why was that a right three months ago? And now it isn't. Mm -hmm. I went sideways again, didn't I? No, you're good. Okay, from <laughs> Pixel Clear Studios in, in California. Hello, Preston. What do you do about overly excited greeters? Uh, are they greeting dogs over? See, like, this is the other thing. When people ask questions, I usually have about 75 back at them. And it, most of the time it scares people away. And they're like, yeah, just forget it. But that's really what happens. Like where any trainer knows this, you're, you're doing investigative work, right? To figure out where the, the break is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to assume they mean overly excited greeters with people. I think that's what they mean. But someone else had that question as well about, how do you stop dogs from like greeting people overly excited at the door, blah, blah, blah. The first thing that I always ask people and I wish they were here. So if, if, if they want to answer, I'm not sure who it was because I'm not uh, paying attention down there, but what would you rather the dog be doing? And most people go, I don't want him to jump. What would you rather him be doing? Not being excited. No. What would you rather he do? And people go, I don't know. How the fuck is the dog supposed to know? Right. If you don't know what you want him to do, how does he know what to do? Right. So there's two things you can do with that. You can figure out what you want him to do instead. If you'd like him laying in a bed when company comes over, you work on having him lay in a bed when he's in a shit storm. Because most of the time, people only ask for things when they're in hell with the dog, right? Mm -hmm. So they never tell the dog to get off the couch. They never tell the dog to lay down. They never say, stay away from the table. Then all of a sudden, company comes over and magically, they're going to listen when they're excited. Yeah. So at its bare minimum, put the dog on a leash and stop letting him practice over and over because practice makes perfect. And if you let him practice being a perfect idiot, he's going to be a perfect idiot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's the truth. Like there's a few ways to handle that, but those are two easy ones. Teach a, a place command and equate that with calm or put the dog on leash at minimum and let them stop practicing that behavior. Like you're literally let him get better at it. He doesn't know. You're just mm -hmm. barking with him. You know, stop, stop. Like, I know that stop. Yay. They don't know what you're saying. They just hear the word that gets matched to what they're doing at that moment. Mm -hmm. So you're literally barking with them and juicing them up most of the time. Okay, a little bit more um, details. Uh, the, so uh, the dog is 11 months, only jumps on people she knows. I don't mind excitement. I just want to stop the jumping, but greeting isn't the problem. Rika jumps too. Rika gets excited and will like parkour off my body. So now, well, you have a male, so I'm not even going there. You have a male in a while. That's a different, that's a different animal. You have like a fur missile. <laughs> but what this person's saying, so the dog only jumps on people she knows. My guess is you don't walk your dog up to strangers and give her the opportunity. That's my guess. So to say the dog only jumps on people she knows, she might not have the opportunity to do it to other people. Because why would you walk up to a stranger in the park and let your dog smash it in the face? But bring your dog up to the person, it gets cuckoo, turn around. Bring the dog up to the person, it gets cuckoo, turn around. Mind you... These are generic answers that aren't going to work for every dog. And I'm trying to oversimplify it. But people say a tired dog is a good dog. It's not it's a good dog. It's fucking tired. I hate that saying. A balanced dog is a good dog. A trained dog is a good dog. But there is something to be said about when you drain a dog's physical energy, you open up the window to have a training conversation. You know what I mean? You can't have a training conversation with somebody that's totally juiced up. 
So draining their energy isn't going to train them, but at least you can start to make your way into their brain. Like, okay, we're, we're going we're gonna to do something now. So with that, I would run the dog almost ragged and capitalize. I am capitalizing on the heat right now like crazy. These dogs are dragging because they're hot. Don't care. You're still next to me. I'll still feed you. I'll still tell you good job. It's still a good rep next to me, no matter what the reason is. So you put the dog on leash after you've fulfilled the dog to some degree, right? Whether that's mentally, physically training, bring the dog up to the stranger, turn around. And for, for God's sake, don't let the person touch the dog because it's just constantly being reinforced. And I say, if you have friends that don't listen, don't invite them over when you're training. It's that simple. You know, like my dad knows when you come in, ignore the dog till they're calm. And he's like, okay. If my friends can't do it, I won't have them over. I'm like, we got it. You, you just, you're not listening. You just can't come hang out until you get this right. Cause I'm really trying here, you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that made sense. I know a lot of the answers are going to be vague, but I'm not looking to no. do a quick fix. I mean, the, another answer is always going to be just get a trainer. People are doing tons of stuff. We've been doing ton of stuff on zoom. People do things on zoom. There's trainers that are doing lives all the time. Like your, your, your feed alone, your Instagram probably answers every single training question. If someone has the patience, to go through your feed and listen to all these people because you have to listen to an hour of information to get 10 seconds of something that makes sense to you and it's worth it so you have to be a consumer of this stuff to take things away and most people nowadays we don't even watch commercials anymore you just fast forward everything there's an express lane candy free aisles there's no conflict nobody wants to watch a video for an hour hoping to get an answer they want the answer now i like to think that uh that people watch, watching yolo pup stuff uh are um dog junkies yeah just can't get enough of information no and, training, and i think so. i think that's probably who you who you're attracting because you like i said you have some monsters like you've interviewed some monster monster trainers and i'm like this is amazing because you get them talking and and they think they're just having a conversation and, and there's a few aha moments you're like holy cow or a few ways that things are said you know what i mean like i, I think we spoke earlier like we go to seminars hoping to take one or two things away Truly, like we spend days at a seminar and it all makes sense. But if it doesn't make sense all the way through, I know I probably won't practice it, but I'm going to leave with at least one or two things. And now that's my expectations. If I leave this thing, spending $100 learning one trick to go practice, I'll do it. You know, that's the secret. So let's go back to um, settling the dogs in the home. Yeah. Um, like you talked about like telling your friend, Hey, don't touch the dog. Don't acknowledge yeah. the dog. Um, we, because we don't want to confuse the dog. Can yeah. you um, talk a little bit about that and having the dog, um, be settled when somebody enters, comes, comes inside. Through yeah. The so door. first I would, I mean, you can break it apart, right? Like, is this like, does Rika get juice when people come in? Um, not, n no. Not so really, but we're not. Idea. She knows everyone, and, and it's just. I got um, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the first thing I would do is, what would you rather the dog be doing? So if your answer is just being calm, well, what does being calm look like to you? Is it laying down? Is it sitting in the corner? Is it meandering around? So really get crystal clear on what your goal is and what that should look like. Then practice that outside of the chaos, right? So if you want your dog to be laying on a certain spot, I I just think like elevated beds work, towels work, their own dog bed, like something they can see like, okay, I'm supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. Work on creating that as a place of calm prior to people coming in. And then I definitely wouldn't have people come in. I would just go over because for most dogs, just knocking on the wall, like my dogs just thought someone was here because I went, hi, how are you? And they both came running over like, who's here? Just knocking on the door is enough. It's, it's enough. Knock on the door. And when the dog comes over, show them what you want them to do. Good job. Thank you. I personally, I don't care if my dog smashed the front door. I feel like that's what dogs are supposed to do. When people call me, I don't want my dog barking at the front door. And I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, I just don't want him to. Like when people are going by, no, ever. No, I'm, not, I'm not the person for you. I feel like that's their job. I want people to know. But when I tell you to stop, you got to go lay down. So you're mm -hmm. allowed to go smash the door. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Someone's in front of the house. Someone rang the bell. Good job, pal. Go lay down. So mm -hmm. just knocking on the wall, then touch the handle. Until you get all those separate pieces under control, that's like saying like, Here, here's one flute lesson, go to the concert. Like what? They're not ready for that level of simulation yet. So break it down, knock on the door, touch the handle, open the door, pretend you're talking to someone. Hey, how are you? Most people, if you go, hey, how are you? The dogs will run right to the front door. You don't realize all the things they're picking up on. The energy mm -hmm. you bring to the front door, 
because people don't realize when the doorbell rings and you know your dog's gonna get excited, it's like a fucking grenade goes off. Get the dogs, get the dogs. Are you holding them? Watch out. I think it's great. Like it's, it's chaos. That's what you made it. Dog's like, I got this. I got this. Someone's coming in. We got this. And you're like, sit down. They're like, I got this. Just everything you included, your energy and the dogs need to come all the way down during that whole ceremony, the whole greeting ceremony. Hopefully that makes sense. So like break it apart, knock on the door. Grab the handle, open it, close it, have your friends go outside, knock on the door. But this requires a lot of waiting the dog out sometimes, right? The dog's going mm -hmm. crazy, go in your bed. The dog gets up, put them back in the bed, put them back in the bed. Most people don't have the patience. I tell people, do it a hundred times, and it'll be fixed. And they're like, it only took 10 times. I'm like, I, I knew it was only going to take 10 times. But if I told you 10, you get pissed at eight. So we just make up an astronomical number. Just keep waiting them out. You know, some dogs do it on the first try. You explain it to them with leash pressure. Like we can go so sideways. You can use clickers. You can use leash pressure. There's a million different ways to do this, depending on how you want to train it. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying as a blanket statement, break down the pieces. And when mm -hmm. they can get through each individual piece, then, then you can consider bringing someone in the house. Mm -hmm. Like Rika is, is fine, but it's Tito, uh, the rescue chihuahua that has listen don't say face. rescue chihuahua if he's a jerk he's a jerk my uncle's a jerk not because he's adopted because he's a jerk <laughs> you don't have to say he's rescued if he's a jerk he's a jerk yeah the, the, okay well the chihuahua. Yeah, he's a jerk. yeah the chihuahua yeah. so yeah. what does he do just goes bananas when like someone knocks on the door or comes in yeah just a lot of barking a lot of barking like i'll put the leash on inside just to like have some sort of control over it but now when you put the leash on how does he feel is he excited when you put the leash on he like, I think he, he kind of like, like kind of um, now, composes himself. Do you do that when he's like, when he goes on walks, is he excited about his leash? Or uh, Yeah, yeah, he, I mean, he, he likes going on walks. He, 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 he wants to like, he, he actually like likes the leash. Um, yeah. I think it makes him feel more safe. Yeah, but start there. If he feels so, like, in theory, Putting a leash on and off, the dog shouldn't change their energy. And that takes a long time. So if he's getting a hair psyched up when the leash goes on, just put it on and take it off and drop it on the floor. And he's going to go, what the hell was that? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Just put your leash on. Nothing's going to happen. And you just practice putting his leash on and taking it. You, you have to back up to where you first notice. I think it might have been like Lynn Bokey that said it. Like the second their excitement elevates higher than yours is where you stop what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So that's where you see it. If, if, if going to, I tell people go to the closet and walk away because some dogs you walk towards that closet, some dogs it backs up as far as what shoes you're putting on. They see the sneakers going on and they're like, here we go. We're going for a walk. That's where you, that's where you interrupt it and start over. Mm -hmm. So for the Chihuahua, get that one that you would have to, I, I would, with the Chihuahua, I would teach a place command and I would practice the heck out of that until the dog's like, I love doing this. And then mm -hmm. the doorbell rings and this chaos, you say place. And you, you can either stand in the way, use your leash to bring them back, but they need something else to do. It can't just be like, no, don't do that, you know? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. for that dog, the knocking on the wall would probably be enough to send the dog into a tailspin, mm -hmm. if that makes okay. sense. Like it, grabbing the handle, you know? It does. Okay, Abby Love 89 in India asks, how do you introduce a dog to a house guest? A house guest, a human house guest, I assume I, they mean? Yeah. I, I mean, is it, does the dog normally have problems with people? Because for us, like, they would just come in, like, you know, just come in. But if you're worried the dog's going to bite them or something like that, I always say put dogs on, on the leash. Or if you're completely worried that the dog is guardy, meet them outside. Like, I, I would have to know more about what's happening there. Because for most people, it would just be like, okay, the person came in. And, you know, like, if we have people over in the backyard, whoever comes through the gate is just kind of like, you know, they'll run up with a toy and that's it. So I'm not sure if they're having problems with the dog, that there were their concerns for some reason on how this person's going to treat their guest. Mm -hmm. But the, the short answer without knowing anything, have the dog unleashed so that nothing goes wrong. Because we always say like preventions, but like way easier than intervention. Like it's much easier to avoid problems than it is to fix them. So I would always err on the side of uh, caution. Okay. Amanda, did you grow up with dogs? Yeah, I did always. Just there was just always dogs around. My grandfather always had them like loose in the yard. For some reason, I was like bit by a million dogs when I was a kid. I, I was talking about that. I'm like, I remember being bit a lot. Like one time a dog just ran into the schoolyard and like nailed me in the side. My grandfather's dog was like, you know, the, the junkyard dog, I guess, because he had like construction equipment. The dog was just always outside. And they, like the neighbors would call the dog would be with his dog house, like down the block, like just drag his dog house down the block. <laughs> That's like, go bring the dog and the dog house back. So it's probably not, not a dog I should have been petting. So who knows? 
Mm-hmm. And uh, well, what's your favorite breed of dog? A uh, pit, definitely. Why? Definitely a pit. They they give everything. They really do. I love them. You know what it is? I couldn't. Uh, I would say their tenacity is. You know, you, your dog it would definitely be the same. Like level as the tenacity wise, they're probably the same. And again, I'm generalizing, right? Like it depends on the dog. But like, I couldn't handle that much of a gas pedal. You know what I mean? Like that would be too much for me. I just, I love them. I love the the strength. And like, I my dog has given me so much opportunity. Like, I'm just glad she's a dog I learned on because she makes me look good. Like I can make a hundred mistakes and she's like, all right, so let's start over. Like she just wants to keep going. She's not overly, overly sensitive. You know, and like I have the Frenchie, he's a workhorse too, but he definitely gets like energy sensitive. Like if I start losing my patience, I see his ears go down. I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love you. I still love you. And he's like, goodbye. Like we're done training. I'm like, shit. So he's helping me. He helped me a lot work, work on that. And Bella just, you know, helped me to get a little bit cleaner because she's doing exactly what I ask. I just don't always mean what I ask. You don't realize how much you're cueing things that you don't mean. I just Mm -hmm. love the breed. Plus, I would think I would not want a, a dog as hairy as a as a Mal or a German Shepherd. <laughs> yeah, I like I like the I like the blockheads a lot. Mm-hmm. So, um, Bella, how old is Bella? The at least eleven that we know of. She's a, she's a rescue dog. <laughs> I told you not to say that. Yeah, she's at least eleven that we know of. Mm-hmm. And we and probably didn't take her training seriously till she was probably like three or four. Like you know, she came to us with some. Uh, kind of reactive, kind of weird, like, you know, grumbly with people. And I'm just like, you know, what, what the fuck did we do? Like, what did I just do here? Like, now I have this thing that everybody already hates and crosses the street. And now she is the thing that deserves to be hated and deserves people to cross the street. Like, how do I fix this? And that's kind of how the whole training bug got started. You mm-hmm. see that, uh, like, we see that with training clients. Like, that's the best part about teaching is you see the aha moment when you're like whoa this just worked like what else could work if somebody taught me how to do it you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and that's just kind of how it it evolved and it took it was a long road with her and as soon as we got her to a good space and like not just an average good space like good space like in a room doing competitions with dogs all around and then we all of a sudden we started getting a little weirdness again i'm like what's going on long story short she had a thyroid issue and it's weird and i said this is most people probably couldn't afford to keep digging because a lot of the vets were like, ah, sometimes they get weird when they get older. And I'm like, no, this dog was in a room full of dogs. Never, never a dog park dog, never wanted to go play with other dogs, but just indifferent once we got her to a good place, tolerant and indifferent because we were always able to foster, Mm -hmm. but a loose dog in the street, she's, she's not looking for conflict, but she'll bring it if it comes to her, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then just went to being passive and wanting space again. So we figure out this thyroid issue. And then I realized how much my legit PTSD of worrying she's going to lunge was like going right down the leash. So I started actually using a couple of clients for a couple of us to start walking. I had other people walk my dog to me for me not to be attached to it. So I can see it was possible for her not to, to react. You know, I'd walk one of our clients. I'd have one of my teammates come and walk my dog. And now I'm like, okay, it's clearly something to do with me because she looks way more relaxed. And like, that was another big eye opener, how much uh, baggage owners carry. And it's not something you can talk someone into, right? That's like, I can't tell you, well, all you have to do is calm the fuck down and you'll be fine. Like the person's traumatized from things that their dog has done or things in their mind that they think are going to happen. So this was all made up in my mind of what she could do. You know what I mean? Nothing actually ever horrific ever happened. Mm -hmm. So that like really led me to be way more patient with clients, you know? And that's why sometimes like one of the guys we're training now, like I was muzzle training him just to empower his owner. So she didn't have to worry about what him biting her or what he was going to do, because you can't train if you're always jumpy doing this, like your dog's not going to believe you're in charge if you're always skittish, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, went off the rails again, Jill, you're supposed to stop me when I do this. No, I want to continue on. I want to continue on this subject because I think it's so important. How do you um, empower uh, your, your clients to feel more confident when they're walking with their dog or like taking the reins in being their advocate? It's, it, it depends on the client, but some of it goes super easy. So usually I'll take the dog first. Like we had a, one guy, he's like such a, he's such a cool looking doodle. Like when he was a baby, he looked like he had mascara. Like he's so cute. <laughs> his mom was like really into training him, And she had a lot of good questions and I let her send me videos and 
he had like silly issues and she goes you know i just can't walk him he just doesn't walk well on the leash so you figure out quick when you take a dog out if they're willing to take direction it takes like i wish people would just call a trainer sometimes it takes like five ten minutes and the dog's right next to you if you know what you're doing it's like to me the walk is everything because if you're not enjoying that like you should be able to go out and walk together. Like that's a big bonding moment and experience. You know what I mean? Like it's good that dogs get to run and they get yard time, but you should walk together and be near each other. But for that one client, like I, you, your hands are the leash and, and I just have them walk behind me and take the leash and you see the dog kind of look up like, hey, when'd you get here? And I'm like, just bring the dog back, take a breath. We tell people all the time, take a breath. And then when they are in that zone, you say, how does it feel? And they tell you and you say, focus on that because you, you can tell when people go, I know when we get to the corner, he's going to pull me. Or when we get to that cat's house, I said, then it's true. If you're telling me it's going to happen, it's going to. You know, and I always say, no, he's not. No, he's not. And you see how much energy, it's, it's not hippie stuff. And I used to think it was because I remember reaching out to somebody. I forgot who it was. And I was like, how are you walking that many dogs? And like, you need to be present. You got to be in the moment. I'm just like, just tell me the fucking trick and stop with this hippie stuff. Like, it's not the moment. It's not being present. Tell me what you're doing, you know? And it happened to me once where I had, when I say knuckleheads, this guy's a knucklehead. Two knucklehead dogs, in my, one in each hand. It was dumping snow. So I said, the only people that are going to be out are real dog people. There's, like, not going to be anybody out, la da with their little foofy dogs. Like, it was horrific weather out. And I remember focusing on walking because I didn't want to break my leg. And it looks so beautiful. And these knuckleheads, all of a sudden, they sunk, the two of them sunk behind me. And I went, oh my God, oh my God. And it, it lasted about a minute and then it went away because I wasn't thinking about bills. I wasn't thinking about the next place I had to be. And I'm like, they're telling me the truth. You have to be present. So that's something you practice outside of the dogs as well. Because if you can't be calm in an empty house in your own head, you're not going to do it out on the street when you're worried about everything. But mm -hmm. I've yet, I think maybe a handful of times captured moments like that with dogs where I look down and I'm like, holy shit, we just walked for like 45 minutes and this dog didn't pull. The dog's just sashaying next to you. But it hit me like a ton of bricks because I'm very, you can hear it in my energy and my voice. I'm a lot of times spun up in my own mind about the next thing that's happening and what do I have to do in an hour? And I brush my teeth in the shower to save time. Like that's just my personality. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, they both just went, and what like behind I couldn't believe it they sunk behind me like yeah I can get with this energy you got it and I'm like I do got it right guys and then two seconds later I was so happy they were like jumping at each other again <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it's Nipsey, a, lot, a lot to do with your energy yeah Nipsey Le Levi says Amanda empowers me by giving never giving up on me and supporting me through the good and the bad edifying my efforts yay yeah she's she's in hell right now she just picked up a little puppy so she's going through you know normal puppy hell with another dog in the house but she's getting it done i love it she sends videos she's doing the work anyone that's doing the work i'll put the, i'll give them all, all the time i have you know what i mean because my clients are allowed to send videos i always say you're not going to do anything wrong because you're still spending time with your dog but there's ways to do things more right you know mm -hmm. what i mean like big deal you didn't mark it at the exact moment but if you send me a video i'll tell you how to do it a little bit better you know what i mean because it's still time spent with your dog is time spent with your dog Right. They don't know the difference. You know, they just want to hang out and play. Mm -hmm. Okay. Talk to me about your um, experience with the rescue shelters. Uh, my experience with, with that is we, we fostered, you know, Bella, we say foster failure, or I like to say adoption success. Cause I don't like saying people are foster failures. Cause it's always usually, it's a good thing when people keep their dogs, but uh, we, we actually fostered her. I can't, I still can't even talk about my first dog without, I'm getting like weepy right now. So let's skip that first part. We're going to go right to Bella. So after her, I didn't know if I was ready for another dog. We started fostering. And I remember saying to my dad, like, do I want to keep this dog? He's like, why not? Like, she's, she's kind of cool and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, like we start walking around. I'm like, yeah, she's not cool. Like we got to fix this dog. Then once we saw that she was getting to a slightly better place, I wasn't trusting the way other owners were like, yeah, my dog's friendly. Like my first dog, a guy told me his dog was friendly and like bit my dog in the head so bad. And I'm like, now I'm like, I don't trust people. You tell me your dog's friendly, it might not be. Like, I can't tell you how many friendly dogs like we've been like chased by, my dad's been bit by a friendly dog. The guy's like, oh, he's friendly. It's like clamped onto my dad's arm. I'm like, what is, what is happening here? So we started fostering so that we could actually control both sides of the introduction. And that's the truth. We started fostering so that we could control 
how Bella was introduced to another dog slowly and how we can like kind of integrate them. And from there, I remember that, that one dog that went, I, man, I remember blubbering when that guy left because that was the first dog I ever forced and let him go. And I remember the dog laid down in the parking lot and the lady was dragging him on his side. And I'm like, oh my God, like just crying. I'm like, I'm never doing this again. Like he doesn't want to go. They forget about you. Dogs are users. Like you go on vacation for the weekend and they're comfortable with whoever you leave to watch them. Like they, you know, people don't want to hear that. It's rare that a dog can't live without the human that everyone thinks they're in love with. But the family sent pictures, he was fine. And we were like, yeah, let's do another one and another one. And then it kind of turned into like, let's keep fostering for, to find the second dog. So we more or less fostered for like eight years. And then talk about manifestation. My better half wanted a Frenchie. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Cause I know we'd never be able to rescue one. We'll probably never buy. I just wouldn't buy a dog. Cause there's so many of them. There's nothing wrong with it. And I'm, I, that's another conversation I hate lately. I see a lot of like, just cause you're pro rescue doesn't mean you're anti breeder. Like, there's nothing better than a good dog breeder. The tr that's the truth. They're just very rare. You know, like it's, it's hard to find a good breeder. I see some of the, the absolute garbage that's coming into people's homes right now. I'm like, you tell me what this dog is. It's, I don't even think it's what you said it is. They're like, yeah, it's a, it's a mini cockapoodle do and things like 90 pounds in six months. I'm like, what happened? You know? yeah. But we, we fostered for probably eight years until we, uh, we found Hog. Like he came in still intact, like took over the house. Bella had no issues with him. I'm like, I can't believe we just found a rescue Frenchie with no major behavioral issues. Cause those guys come into rescue with big issues. They have big personalities. They're tenacious and people get them and treat them like toys. Like these guys like hang off people's diapers. You know what I mean? Like they're like <laughs> nasty. They can be nasty little dogs, but that's what we do mostly is foster. We do a little bit of training work when we can. Um, I always say if, there's always something you can give. If you don't have money, you can give time. If you don't have time, you can give knowledge. There's always a way when you, when the will is there to give back, you can absolutely do that. So if some of the rescues we give our money when we can't give our time and there's, we kind of bounce around to the same three because the people politics get, get hairy sometimes in rescues. You know what I mean? But you know, the one that's, I'm going to shout them at now, like I love near and far animal foundation. Like they're small little group and they're just they're getting stuff done you know what i mean they're, they're going to be bigger than they are right now and i'm happy to be a part of them you know and when they were with another they were with a new york bully crew and they moved out on their own but we fostered dogs for them puppies with them i just love that she it's hard sometimes with rescues like you know you'll 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 get a foster dog and you're like i can't i can't do this it's not working and, and there's people that get stuck with these dogs in their houses and like sometimes it's dangerous like these people aren't experienced they're trying to do something nice I like rescues that answer the phone. They stand by their dogs. They have another backup foster home in place and they don't get in over their heads because a lot of rescues do that and they burn out because it's hard to say no. Mm -hmm. Like we get messages all the time. Like, I think I told you like, hey, you know anybody that wants an unneutered pit bull? It's a great dog. We love him. He just doesn't like men, kids, parakeets, birds, or, or other dogs. I'm like, hey, he sounds great. I have like six people lined up for him. Sure. You know what I mean? Like it's heavy work. It's hard to say no, but that's mm -hmm. the, we're, we're probably sticking to them, Louis's legacy, and we'll always love Posh Pets Rescue because that's where we got our dog from. That's where we got Bella from. So that's like the extent of our rescue work, fostering. And I, I highly, if you're a real dog person, I highly, highly recommend fostering because you can get your hands on dogs, train them, learn different personalities, and get them homes. And the next one comes in. It is hard work. We always say like, Let's not turn on each other when this foster dog comes because it's a lot with watching the baby. Like we haven't fostered since having two dogs. Mm -hmm. I will, but that's a, that's a game changer. Like three is, makes it very different, you know? But Bella's at an age where like we put up a baby gate and she's like, all right, like this idiot will jump over it. You know what I mean? Like Hog will jump over the gate and we'll have a, a brawl somewhere. Mm -hmm. But I, I highly recommend fostering. It's a, it, there's, there's a lot of dogs coming into rescue right now at, at alarming rates. So you have a decent audience here. If anybody is even considering fostering, do it. Reach out to Near and Far Animal Foundation, especially if you're in the tri-state area. They'll set you up with a dog that's not going to rip your face off. Mm -hmm. Okay, Burnett nice. Farm Dogs. Define yeah. what you mean by a real dog person. A real dog, a person that is a dog enthusiast, not somebody that dresses their dog up on Instagram and thinks they're like the best parent in the world. Someone that actually understands, I guess a real dog person, someone that understands what a dog means. You know, not like, I hate using the word fur mom, but that's, that's not, that, that to me, that's not a real dog person. Like I have a dog, 
I put it in a stroller. I never walk it. It's fine. I don't believe in crates. That's my favorite. I don't believe in crates. I'm like, it's not the fucking tooth fairy. I have one. <laughs> you cannot use them. I, I've seen them. They're real. Like you could say you don't believe in it, but I, I touched one. It's real. You know what I mean? That's what I mean by a real dog person. Like a person looking to put a dog's needs before their own. And that's hard. A lot of times that's difficult, but we just try and do that more often than not. It's impossible to do it every single day because you don't even do that for some humans, right? But to me, that's a real dog person, a person looking to give the dog more than they're giving themselves at times and, and put the dog's needs first. Mm -hmm. What else we got? Um, we have a question. Uh, oh, this is a question. This is a personal question. How has the clientele changed over this last year? Or like what problems have popped up or? We, we lost very few clients. The clients that we lost are teachers that were home, but I think we picked up just the same amount. Like, and I'm like not shy to say it, I'm proud of it. We probably doubled our revenue over COVID. And I remember, yeah, I remember my, it was my cousin actually that said, uh, you know, you're lucky. My dog walker had to go back and get a real job. And I'm like, I'm fucking not lucky. I hate when people say that to me, like, I'm not lucky. I'm working my ass off. I'm building relationships. I'm answering calls at two o'clock in the morning. I'm answering every, we build relationships where we, we all feel like family. And we had, there's no way I'm saying no to a nurse at that point that was working like 24 hours straight. There's no way we're saying no to first responders. We were driving around at one point. I had, uh, she might be on here, my employee at the time. I said, do you want to still work through this? Because I'll never make you do this if you're nervous. You know what I mean? And she's like, I think I need to. And I'm like, cool. And we figured it out. And we were, it was stressful. Because, you know, you're leaving an apartment building and I'm staring at like an alcohol wipe in my hand and I'm like, do I wipe the door handle or my key first? But then I got to touch the glove box to get the hands. Like I look back at it now and it's comical because mm -hmm. it's almost like it's gone, right? But uh, we had people that were letting their dogs out. You know, we set them up with long lines so they can let the dogs out. You know, if they were like, you know, some of the nurses or the, the physical therapists, people that were in a hospital setting. They were like, we don't even want to do this to you. So there, there's older people. There's people that were just letting the dogs out on a long line. We clip them up, walk them, put them back on the long line. Dogs back. Like, we made it work, you know? Yes. And I, I said this to someone the other day, and it's, it's not meant to be disrespectful to anybody that lost anyone, but I very much did not hate 2020. I just didn't. And I feel bad. I know people had, like, a hell of a time. There's businesses closed, but... If you got creative and bobbed and weaved and, and kept finding ways to get things done, I, I had no traffic. I was walking around in a zombie apocalypse. The neighbors were asking me, what, what's it look like out there? One lady would always have her head out the window and I, every day I go, what are you doing stealing air from the government? She's like, yeah, she would yell down. Like, I didn't mind it, you know? And we were, every day we were, she was, do I didn't want her to lose money. So I gave her almost all the dogs we had. And then I would have my dogs out every day hiking. So almost to, to the detriment of Hog, because when COVID was over and we started hitting regular streets and cement parks, he was just like, what the fuck? Like it was too much stimulation for him after mm -hmm. just being in the woods every day with our buddies. Mm -hmm. But we were all in good shape. The dogs were jacked just from walking. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was, I had fun. I really did. You know, 2021 came and I'm like, okay, what, what changed everyone? Like you couldn't, new, yay, 2021, like nothing changed. It's the same shit. You know, everyone's still nervous and I don't know. It is what it is, I guess, to each his own. I'm sure pe people had a hell of a time, but I'm sure some people realize like they don't want to go to work anymore. They want to think of something else to do. The work <laughs> is possible from home. You know, people are doing renovations on their house. I'm like, they built the Empire State Building, I think, in a year. And I'm watching people's decks get built for like six months. Like, they can't get parts. I don't know. What a trip. I said, we're going to look back on this someday and be like, what the hell happened? You know? Yeah. It was quite the reset. <laughs> yeah. Like, did, like, what did you do? Like, you know what I mean? Because I know you were, you're doing your business. Why don't you plug yourself? And you're always like asking people questions. Why don't you plug your business? Because you would sell really nice leashes, really nice tugs really cool clickers thank Everybody you thank you thank you yolo pup is definitely a labor of love and yes. obviously you know the interviews we, we do every week um the products the tugs are the main are the yep. main um yeah, products fun. because i'm all about play with rika i mean yep. that the, the play with rika has been a game changer for me yep. mentally this whole last year yep. um 
as um, many of you know, you know, we moved from Los Angeles to New York. That's a huge change in and of itself. I had um, job changes, um, relationship changes, and now uh, the the thing what's been consistent throughout it all has been Yolo Pup, has been the platform, has hustle. been the people that the mm -hmm. hustle um, has been Rika, uh, you know, just us training every single day. Yep. getting up in the morning, you know, doing, uh, keeping to that schedule, you know, it, it, it was a wild year. I had so many changes, but, you know, the training was consistent. And because and you're, you're a dog, because you're a real burnout farm dogs. That's a real dog person. <laughs> Someone that gets up no matter what and gets shit done with their dog. That's what a dog person is. So yeah, so that, that's yellow pup. So that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. So yeah, good. Yeah, um, that's plug. We plugged. <laughs> hey, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, and and I know that you have a giveaway that's happening. Yes, yeah. I got to post that before we get off here. I said we started out. I don't know if my math was wrong or I was over ambitious. We said, oh, we're gonna have a four K giveaway, right? Because we want to start giving stuff away. We, I think we had thirty eight hundred followers, and I'm like, I just. It's not even about the followers. I just want this contest to end so I don't have to pay attention anymore. Because people are so nice. They're tagging a million people. I'm like, how are we going to keep track? Like, what app do we get? That little wheel that goes around. But if anybody knows anyone that thinks they would enjoy our content, just tell them to give us a follow so I can get this freaking contest over. And then you could never follow us again. No, we want to we want to continue following and, and seeing those videos with the little microphone. I oh am a big God, fan. Yeah. Those, so keep that coming. Yes. They're in th I can't believe the questions those dogs come up with. They crack me up. <laughs> I didn't know they had it in them. So good. Did you get any good questions? We got a couple. I think a couple were answered already. We we answered um like how how do you help dog owners um yeah what what different now it seems like the industry and there's a lot of people that are um, now ha opening their own dog training businesses, dog walking businesses. You've been doing yeah. this a long time since 2014. Yeah. Um, what differentiates you from this new competition? I, uh, I don't know the competition. So dare I or, say they're not, yeah, dare I say they're not doing it well, but I can <laughs> say that to work for us, you need to be more than just physically fit. You need to be a dog enthusiast. Like we need people on our team that are, understanding that a dog can overheat. You know what I mean? You're not just having somebody that you haven't met walk into your home. You know, I personally do all the meet and greets. I don't want to send anybody into a creepy house. You know, I still don't understand. I understand the allure of like WAG and Rover and you, you can get very good walkers on there. It doesn't mean the person's bad, but I never understood a platform where people are okay walking into a stranger's home. You know what I mean? It's just, it bugged me out. I'm like, I don't understand how that could work, but it's not, you know, we're not fly by night. We have insurance. We're training enthusiasts. We probably, we spend a ton just on education. You know what I mean? Like just to stay current with everything. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess that's what separates us is that we have training and behavior experience. You know, everyone that's been, you know, we have people that have been with us the whole time. You know, like I would hand them just about any dog, you know, other than if, if I think they're going to get hurt, but there hasn't been much that we're not comfortable handling, you know, mm -hmm. that's awesome. pretty much. Yeah. Well, keep up the great work. Yes, ma'am. Doing awesome. Is there anything else that you want to add? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna go poke through those questions. Anybody that did have a question, I'll answer them on the uh, on our uh, stories. If there was a side question, I have to take that down. Otherwise, the questions keep rolling in. But no, nothing to add. Just go play with your dogs. To your point, play is a huge one. You know, we try and get our clients to do that all the time. That was a game changer for us too. You kind of know it is, but then you have a couple aha moments where you're like, I'm on the right path. Just stick sure. to something. Just just find what makes sense to you and give it enough time to see if it works instead of hopping around. That that would be like one of my best things. Just have fun. That's all the tagline. Like make the learning game fun and the dog will always want to play. Mm -hmm. You know, when you start tuning out, adjust what you're doing. It's not the dog's fault. Absolutely. Thank you so right. much, Amanda. Have welcome. a great night. Yes, ma'am. And talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.